And welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing one of our brand new stamp sets, Upon the Star and its coordinating dies. And this set is so gorgeous, it's one of my favorites ever, so let's go ahead and check it out. The idea behind this set is critters looking up at the stars. So we have these two foxes and two bunnies that are looking up into the sky. Then we also have some stars, so these can be really cool shooting stars. We have them in two sizes, and then of course some little rays to come out of them to show them as the shooting star. And then we also have a little solid star, which is great for creating scenes. And we have a smiley face to add into those stars or into any of the constellations too. And so you can see we've got that fun heart-shaped one, and then all of these constellations that are great for stamping to create a starry night sky. We also have a little grouping of three stars in both open and in solid too, and those are great for kind of scattering around to fill in that sky, and we also have a single star to help with that too. We have some great sentiments. So we have, you're my shining star, you're a star, and then we have our love or our friendship, and then we can write is written in the stars and so you'll see we have the word star again and we actually have an s that you can stamp you stamp it right over you see i'm leaning right on top of it to connect the r and the s in that beautiful cursive we also have make a wish we have reach for the stars we have wish upon a star and then we also have stars in the smaller font too and wish too so you can mix and match either the big cursive or the smaller kind of printed version of those words now I'm using my Copic marker to add some fun color to these images and I'm just using three markers here and that E37 is just for a little bit of darkness around the tail and kind of right there behind his ears. And then I'm going to color the other fox in the same way. So you'll see I'm adding shadow around the ears kind of where everywhere where there's a curve I'm going to add a shadow. So the curves are going to tell me where to add that shadow and then I'm going to blend it out with my medium and then go into my light. And you'll see that it just gives it a little extra dimension. I love that little extra darkness right around the tail too. I think it's so pretty. I'll add a little color to the stars with Y32, Y35, which are my favorite star colors. And you can see it there that I even colored in some of the stars in the constellation. So you can leave them open or colored and I love both looks. And now I'm gonna be coloring the bunnies in the same way as the foxes. I'm letting the curves tell me where my shadow should go. So there I'm gonna lay down my darkest marker all around those curves, blend it out with my medium, and then blend that out with my light and then go into my very lightest marker to finish up that cute little bunny. Now here are the coordinating dies which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate them. I'm going to take those dies and line them up with my stamped images and then hold it in place with some post-it note tape or some low tack tape. I can go ahead and run all of those through my die cut machine and I love that not only is it going to cut out the critters but it's also going to cut out the constellations and I just love seeing them pop out of the dies. I know I always say that but I just love it. It's so cool. And then here are all of these amazing constellations and cute little critters that are perfect and ready for putting on a card. Next up, I am going to take a stitch rectangle and I'm going to cut some Blue Jay cardstock, which is kind of the perfect sky color. And then with that same rectangle, I'm going to cut some Noble Fur cardstock for my grass. So I'll run that through my die cut machine. And now I'm going to take one of my simple grassy hillsides and hold that in place with some tape, run it through my die cut machine, and now I have a great little grassy hill. Now I love creating complicated distress ink skies, but in this case I wanted it to be simple. So all I'm doing is taking some distress ink, some black soot distress ink, and running that all along the top edges of my Blue Jay cardstock. And you're going to see that it kind of looks like a, one of those complicated blended skies, but all we did was just put a little black ink around the edges and it looks gorgeous. So it's a really nice simple way to create one of those really cool night skies. And now here I'm just taking some of that black soot ink and going around the grass too so that it all matches. Now I'm going to line up my constellations in a way that I think looks nice and kind of fills up the sky and once I have those all in place I'm going to pick up those stars and I'm going to stamp using some Yeti ink which is some white ink, white pigment ink and I'll stamp right onto the scene and you'll see how gorgeous it looks on that kind of black soot distress ink and then blue jay cardstock. 
Now I'm going to start filling in all of the empty spaces with the little triple and then single star and you can see how nicely they start to fill in this sky. So I just love how it's starting to become this filled in sky. Now you'll see I'm kind of using my grass as a guide here because I want the stars to kind of keep going down behind the grass so it really looks like one big continuous sky. And after stamping this last little star I think I've really got a great look there. And then now I'm going to stamp the make a wish onto my grass. I'm going to add some foam tape onto that grass there and just lay that right on top and then put foam tape on the top of the critters and then just tape runner on the bottom and lay those right on top of the grass. I'm going to create a black card base at five and a half by four and a quarter out of some black licorice cardstock and then I'm going to layer my entire panel on top and you can see how beautiful that sky is. I'm so in love with it. I love that it's simple and easy to do but really packs a punch. Now for my next card, I wanted to create a scalloped box card pop-up. So I cut two pieces out of some Blue Jay cardstock, and I'm going to sponge the edges with black soot distress ink, just like we did on the other card, just to get that kind of cool sky look on this cardstock. And I'm going to do it on both sides of each panel. Now that I've got that all done, I can start to fold. So I'm going to fold along all of the vertical lines for this box, and I'll use my bone folder to crease it down really well and then I'll fold on that tab there and I'll also use my bone folder to crease that down and then I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other ones. So I'm going to fold down that big long vertical score line and then I'm going to fold down the tab. I'm going to add some score tape there to one of those tabs and I'm going to line up my two pieces together creating one long piece. So I'm going to kind of line them up. I like to line them up kind of standing them up in an L shape and then I push it down. Then I'll add some score tape to the other tab and all you need to do is fold this kind of closed like a book, press down and it's going to form your box. Now next we want to fold down three of those sides. I'm going to take the two little short sides and one of the long sides, fold those down, and I'm just going to go through and add a little more distressing to any edges that were missing that distressing just to give it a nice finished look. Now here you'll see I'm going to be using some Bristol Smooth cardstock. Someone told me that it was really good for ink blending so I thought I would try it and it's kind of amazing. And so I'm taking all of those little stitched rectangles that come with the scallop box card pop up, cutting a ton of them out, and now we're going to create that cool ink blended sky on each one of these panels. So I'm going to start here with some wilted violet and kind of go across almost like little streaks in the sky. Then I'm going to take my blue print sketch distressing and go all the way around those edges kind of overlapping that purple. Now I'm going to take chip sapphire, a darker blue, and go around those edges again and then add a little bit more purple to brighten up that purple. And once again I'm going to go around with those edges. Now I'm comparing it to the box and I thought it looked a little too blue. So we're adding a little bit more of that darker chip sapphire and then I'm going to take out my black soot distress ink and that black edge is what's going to really make it stand out and look like a cool galaxy. So I wanted to show you me doing the same process one more time. So I've got the Wilted Violet, the Blueprint Sketch, the Chip Sapphire, and then the Black Soot going all the way around. And I repeated that over a bunch of panels. Here I have my watercolors and I have a little silver watercolor. So I'm gonna take my water, dip my brush in the water, and then smear the paint on my block. And then I'm gonna flick the paint off the block onto those little kind of galaxy skies. And this is gonna look like really pretty little silver stars in the sky. I'm going to make sure to cover all of my sky pieces with a bunch of that silver paint and then I'm actually going to take out some of that Copic opaque white or some white acrylic paint would be really good too. I'm going to mix it with water, add it onto my block and also flick it off onto the sky so that there's a mix of both white and silver stars on those galaxy panels and they're actually really easy to do and they look so cool and honestly are they are super fun to make. It's really relaxing and fun to make these cool sky panels. So this big sky piece was my practice piece when I was trying to figure out how I wanted my panels to look. And then all of a sudden I thought, wait, I could use this. So I'm going to put my powder tool on there so that I can heat emboss. And I'm going to stamp all of my constellations there in some Versamark ink on my little practice panel here. And then I'm going to cover them with some white heat embossing powder. I'll melt that powder and now I'm going to have some white shiny stars on kind of that cool galaxy background. Now here you can see that I also tried some silver there on the left, but I think the white looks better. It kind of stands out a little bit more. 
So now I'm going to use the coordinating dies to cut all of these out. And then once they were cut out, they looked a little bit lighter than I thought they were going to be once they were kind of cut out of the sky. So I decided to just take some um, chip sapphire ink and just go around the edges of some of these just to darken up any of the really light areas and make sure that those white stars are really standing out. Now I'm gonna take those fun and cool galaxy panels and I'm gonna start adding those to my box. So I want, I kinda of picked my favorite one for the back cause that's kinda of the main one and then I'm putting them all away around the box too to kinda of help decorate and make it look really nice. And then I'll put them on the side panels also. And then it's time to start cutting the insert tabs to make the pop-up box. So I'm gonna cut three of those from some Blue Jay cardstock and you guessed it, I'm gonna add some black soot distress ink all the way around so that it all coordinates. Then I'm going to fold along each of the tabs on each of those inserts. So I'll fold those all and then add some score tape to each one of those tabs. Then I'm going to peel off my score tape and I'm going to insert these into the box. I'm going to kind of make them kind of equidistant. So I'm going to start with my first one there. I'm going to insert the tab into the box. I'm going to press down there on the left side. And as I close the box, I'm going to guide that piece in place. So I'm going to repeat that again. I'm going to peel off my liner tape, adhere it to one side. The side on the right is free. I'm going to fold the box and as I fold it, I can then tape it to the other side perfectly without worrying about liner it up. So right there I'm going to adhere it down, tack it down on the left side and then I'm going to as I close the box guide that piece to follow the box so that it lines up perfectly, press down and then you'll see as I open the box that it's perfectly straight. Now next up we need to have a sentiment. So I'm going to stamp our love is written in the stars onto this panel and heat emboss it in white. And then next up, I am going to use the simple grassy hillsides out of some noble fur cardstock to cut a little grassy piece that's going to go inside my box too. So the first thing I need to do is add my little sentiment panel and now I can start to decorate this box and I want there to be floating constellations and I needed some kind of really strong pieces of clear plastic. So this is one of those little plastic carriers that holds your big shot cutting plates and so I had one of those saved and I'm just going to cut that up into really thin tiny strips, add some adhesive to the top of that strip and then attach it to my constellation just like that. And then I can repeat that with the other constellation. So you'll see how that's going to fit right inside the box. And then now I can repeat it and add little thin acetate strips to all of my constellations. Then I'm going to add some adhesive to the bottom end of that acetate strip and glue it right in to my box. And you'll see how amazing it's like this awesome floating sky. So next up, I'm going to add that grass right there onto the first little insert piece. And then I decided to use the little tiny critters in the set because I thought it would make the sky look even more big and expansive. Then I'm also adding one extra little grass piece to the front there just for some little dimension, just a little bit peeking out. And now I'm gonna start inserting all of those little thick plastic pieces that have the constellations on them. That constellation there, I actually just glued right onto one of the panels. And then I'm just adding more and more constellations until I think it looks cool. And then I'm gonna finish decorating the outside of the box. And the back panel of the box is where I'm gonna write my message. And so I'm gonna put two black panels there and I'm gonna write on that with a white gel pen, which will look really cool. And now you can see this finished box, which I think is just so much fun. And here's the outside decorated and the back piece where I can write my panel. And then as you can see, it's gonna pop open. And that's what's so much fun is closing and opening these boxes. They're just so cool. And with those constellations, oh, I just love this one so much. I think this card is going to have to be for my husband because it's our 10 year anniversary this year. And I think it's just a perfect anniversary card. And I love how fun it was to make this awesome, complicated galaxy box. But then I love that you can make cards on the right that are actually really easy to do and actually make a ton of also. I also wanted to show you this really fun magic slider using Upon a Star that I created in the magic slider video, which you'll have to check out. And then this amazing one by Lizzie. Isn't that so cool? These, this set is perfect. Perfect for the magic color slider. And then here are some other projects from the design team. This layout by Melissa Stinson is so gorgeous. I love how she added the constellations. The shaker by Nicole is just beautiful. And I love that Elise used nice bright colors for her Make a Wish Upon a Star card. And this sky that Audrey created is beautiful. I love those kind of little splatters in the sky. 
And then I love how Elena used the starry backdrop die for the background for those cute little critters. And Shari's card, that middle heart, actually glows in the dark with glow-in-the-dark embossing powder. And then Yanea's blue watercolored circle is just beautiful and a great way to reveal the stars. So I cannot wait to see what you guys create with this set, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching, and have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!